the practical strategies of getting into cybersecurity. In today's video, I have brought on a special guest. His name is Day, and he is also a fellow student and cybersecurity professional, someone who is in the same or similar situation as I am in. And today we're going to talk about six practical strategies that you can use to get into cybersecurity. Now, this video may be a little bit redundant if you followed me in the past, but I do believe that it has value just to consolidate. Do make sure to check out Day and, well, yeah, actually, Day, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. My name is Day. I am a cloud threat detection engineer. I'm also a content creator here on YouTube, as well as a college student at Western Governors University, where I'm currently majoring in IT. Alrighty, thanks, Day, for introducing yourself. Let's go ahead and get started with the first strategy, starting with, you know, cool stuff. Okay, so to start with the first point, side projects. As you begin to immerse yourself into general IT in the security industry, side projects can be a very imperative way to get yourself started and attain knowledge. Side projects help you apply from what you learn, say, in the classroom or from an online course into real world or as close to as real world skills as possible. With side projects, you get to learn how to go through some fundamental and core skills such as troubleshooting, learning how to think through a problem, and building skills which are helpful throughout the IT industry. In addition, side projects are a way to show potential employers and recruiters that you're willing to go the extra mile to put in time outside of the classroom and the traditional means of learning. So you are actually taking the next level of effort to train yourself. It shows initiative on your end. And like I said, it builds those to as close to real world skills outside of say an internship. So that leads me into my next point, which day is gonna talk about networking, uh, people networking. All right, so now that you have your side projects going and you're learning and you're building, it's time to actually start using these projects in conversations when you're networking with other cybersecurity professionals. So as Graham pointed out in the last point, the side projects show that you have initiative to develop your skills. And this is exactly what employers are looking for. They're looking for people who have initiative and passion. So when you use platforms like YouTube, Twitter, GitHub, Discord, or even a blog to showcase these projects you're working on, it shows proof and also helps you create meaningful conversations with other industry professionals. And people are willing to place their bets on candidates who have these traits by giving them a much more direct hiring experience or actually referring them for jobs in the organization. And this can get you into roles or jobs or interviews that a regular job application would not have. Leveraging this is what I believe and what I've experienced to be the best approach to networking. Expanding off of Day's point, another way that we can expand skills outside of side projects and people networking is building a blog. If you've been following myself or Day, you may know that throughout our history or even now, we create small blog posts. Blogs can help in a few different ways. One of the best things that you can do to retain a particular concept, whether that's learning a technology or walking through a CTF is explaining your steps and your thought process throughout the process of going through what you're doing. If you are able to teach a concept in a concise curated way, it helps you retain and understand that information. Blogs can help put your learning into writing. In addition, blogs also, again, show that you're willing to go outside of the traditional classroom and put in extra effort to contribute towards the community to show that, hey, this is what I'm working on outside or in my free time. Once again, it reflects well as you continue to develop an archive of blogs. LinkedIn is the largest networking platform for professionals and as a cybersecurity student, LinkedIn can be a very powerful tool in your arsenal if you're utilizing it properly. 
Hiring managers, recruiters, and other cybersecurity professionals are constantly on the scout for talent, and the best way to get their attention is by giving yourself visibility using your LinkedIn profile. And this essentially combines Grant's point on building projects and my point on networking together because you can use LinkedIn to showcase these projects they are working on and connect with other industry professionals in the same breath. So over time, with enough consistency, with you connecting with more people, with you posting more about your projects, you begin to draw attention to yourself, build more connections, and begin to gain notoriety amongst other cybersecurity professionals. And this can lead to opportunities from hiring managers or even getting contacted directly by recruiters that are looking to find security talent on LinkedIn. Expanding off of Day's thoughts in LinkedIn, you can also take a look at your resume. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of resume tips. Now, here are a few, I guess, tips that you can use when it comes to using your resume online. So one of the key tips when it comes to applying online and sending out your resume in a sea of thousands of other resumes on a job search engine website, it what you can try to do is find the job responsibilities and what they outline and kind of t custom tailor your resume towards those keywords. Recruiters on the HR end will simply kind of filter out all of the resumes that don't have the keywords outlined in the responsibilities or in the qualifications. And they will, you know, take a concise list of resumes that have those keywords. So that's not to say go out and lie and put all these random keywords in your resume. Rather, it's just try to look for the job opportunities that skills you maybe have worked on in the past or tools you have maybe either self-taught yourself in or walked through in the classroom. Also, when it comes to resumes, remember that these are talking points for the interview. So your resume isn't supposed to do all the explaining. Rather, an interviewer is gonna come in and say, hey, I saw this on your resume, tell me about it. And you're gonna expand off of that bullet point or whatever it is and talk about a story or your experience or your knowledge. And that is what a resume is for. Finally, you have to remember when it comes to applying online for jobs, you're competing against thousands of people. Thousands of people are gonna put out their resumes for jobs they have no qualification for because, well, why not? So when it comes to competing for people in places online, you have to put that into perspective. Oftentimes, it means you have to apply to a lot of places to even get a response. If you put your resume out on five job postings, it is likely that, well, you aren't going to get a response. So keep those resume tips in mind. Putting off grants, points, and resumes, having certifications on your resume can actually set you apart from other candidates. Certifications show that you have a level of knowledge or competency in a cybersecurity field or technology. Also, certain organizations need certified professionals for them to meet certain compliance standards. And also, being certified in those fields can make you an even more attractive candidate. So I personally have a ton of certifications myself, and they've sometimes in certain situations have made me a preferred candidate for certain positions. In addition to this, certifications just like the side products Graham mentioned at the beginning of the video also show your initiative to go outside of your college program to improve your skills in niche fields in cybersecurity. The key thing to certifications is making sure you have a solid grasp of the concepts covered in the certification and you can confidently speak to your knowledge on these concepts when you get asked about them in an interview. So hopefully you have enjoyed today's video with the six practical strategies. Uh, thank you Dave for you know helping me out with this video. I think it was good to have another person's insight into you know some practical strategies that we can get into cybersecurity. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. And yep, until the next one, have a good day.